Hi, I'm Bonnie Barker with BonnieBayCrochet.com and today in this very short video, I want to show you everything you need to know to start your crochet journey today. And I want to emphasize on that word start because if you get through this video and you learn how to do these three easy stitches, I want you to go ahead and look in the video description and I have a list of many beginner projects that you will be able to attempt after that point. If you've never been to my channel, I first of all want to say welcome and if you could please hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up if you like the video and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any of the new videos that I have coming your way. I have a variety of beginning to intermediate videos with instruction to help you through every stitch of the way. Well come on, let me show you what you're going to need. For this demonstration, I'm going to be using some paint box yarns. This is an Aran weight or what we call a worsted weight. Another classification is that it's a medium or a number four. This is very important when you go to the yarn store to buy yarn because it can be very confusing. Um, and this is actually a low cost yarn, 100% acrylic. It's a good entry level for learning how to do the basic stitches. If you're interested in getting this particular yarn, you can order this online by looking at the video description. There should be an affiliate link there for you to check out should you be interested. You could also just go to your local craft store and when you go, don't forget to take your coupons with you because oftentimes they run really good specials so that you can get a discount on your purchases there. Also, it's very important that you have a crochet hook. I'm going to be using a size J or 10 or 6.00 millimeter, and that has to do with the distance or the circumference of the size of the hook right about here. Um, I just wanted to show you the brand that I'm using is Susan Bates. They have these with the handle and without. Um, there are other brands available. Personally, I find that the design of the inline hooks are more productive and easier to use for me. Um, but if that's not available to you, you know, whatever you can find should do, do okay. Whenever I crochet, I also recommend, if you can, that you have a yarn needle. This is mostly for hiding loose ends in your work, and I will show you how to do that in this demonstration. And a pair of sharp scissors for cutting the yarn. Well, let's go ahead and learn our very first crochet stitch. To begin any project, we always start with a chain, and I'm going to show you how you can make the slip knot. Twist the yarn like this, and then you can hold the place where they meet together, and taking the yarn that is attached to the ball, this is not the short end, but the part that's attached to your ball, and go ahead and bring this up through the middle of the, of the circle there, and then pull the tail. And that's a slip knot. It's called the slip knot because it slips right out. And that's where we start. Let's do this again. Okay, let's go ahead and twist to the left, just like this. This part is in front. I'm going to hold that. Then I'm going to bring this yarn up through the circle like this, and then pull the tail. Okay, now let me show you why we do this. And then you take the slip knot and you adjust it to the circumference of the hook. Now it should be able to move a little bit. It shouldn't be too loose. It shouldn't be uh, strangulation tight. And let me show you an error that a lot of uh, beginners will make. They will bring it down here and then pull the knot tighter. And when you do that, you've actually made the circle too small. So you want it to be about the circumference of the hook, right about like that. I'm going to do this one more time. And I'll show you how you can do this using the hook. And this is what I regularly do. I'm going to do this slowly. And But before I even do that, let me show you how I am holding the yarn as I do this. Two fingers here, two fingers here. That's just to get started. Have the hook this way, push away from you, and twist upward, just like this. Reach downward, put that yarn in front of the hook, and then pull it through, and then pull the tail. I'll do this again. And if you need to, just back up the video as needed. Okay, we're going to push away 
and up to the right. Then reach down and pull that loop through. And then give it a little tug and then tighten it. Okay, that is the slip knot. That's the very first thing that you start with. Now, the next thing that I'm going to talk about may seem a little boring to you, but it's probably the most important thing that I can show you, and that is how to hold the yarn. Because by having a proper yarn hold, you will be able to control the tension of your work. It may seem a little awkward at first, but it is time well spent. I, I see many other people using many other methods, and, and quite frankly, it's whatever you get used to. But I want to show you what I do and am able to crochet reasonably fast and um, and at, at, a, at a very comfortable pace and very relaxing pace. Okay, so I'm going to lay the yarn over my three fingers here. And I'm going to use an, an Olympic analogy. You've all seen the, the four-man bobsled on the Olympics um, TV program over the years. And I just kind of like to acquaint it with those, those four people here. And the person at the back is the brake man. So this pinky is going to be your brake man. It's going to control how fast this yarn or how loose or tight you have the yarn as you're crocheting. So what you're going to do is close those three fingers comfortably. Again, brake man down here, the pinky. And then the yarn's going to go over the pointer finger. This is the lead man. This is your driver. Okay, now after you do that, tall man finger here and thumbkin is going to hold the knot for now. Later on, it's going to hold the fabric that you make. So again, lay the strand like this, close over, and then yarn over the top finger. Now let me show you what the top finger is going to do. That finger is going to do this, and by doing so, it's going to feed yarn to your project, okay? And again, tall man and thumbkin have a job to do, and they're going to hold your fabric in place. So these two, this, this finger kind of carries comes along with the pinky down here okay just kind of goes along for the ride all right so now we're ready for the chain this is going to be the first real stitch we're going to learn and what i do for the chain is you're going to use your hook reach over the back notice how the string falls nicely along the edge the way this hook is shaped now this is the front of the hook i'm going to call this the nose put the nose down as you pull through. And that's a chain. Let's do that again. Yarn over the back, nose down, pull through. Now let me show you what I'm going to do now. I'm going to reposition my tall man and thumbkin and I'm going to hold it closer to the base of the hook. I'm going to do this again. I'm going to show you how not to do it. If you yarn over the back, that's cor the correct way. But now let me show you what happens if you don't. If you don't turn that nose down, it's really hard to pull through. So I like to call this the humble hook method, okay? You can't have your nose in the air and get that yarn through. You gotta be humble. Put the nose down, okay? Yarn over, pull through. It's as simple as that. I'm gonna reposition so that I'm holding it at the base of the hook here. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through. And reposition again. And notice that the yarn hold is still the same. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. So I'm going to do this until I have about 15 chains. Let me show you how to count the chains. If you can see the chains, they look like a V, like a V's kind of stacked on top of each other. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so now we have 15 chains. Notice that they're not really tight and they're not super loose. And the size of the chain is often, well, is going to be determined by the size 
of the crochet hook that you use. There are many different sizes of crochet hooks and that's what determines how big your stitches are going to be, or at least that's one major factor. Now I'm going to teach you how to do a single crochet. A single crochet is a rather easy stitch, but there is more involved here. So let's take this really slowly. We're going to start in the second chain from the hook. This is the first chain. This is the second chain. To make this, I'm going to go in one side of this V. If you see the chain as a V, I'm just going to go in one side of the V. I'm going to stick the hook in the loop or in that chain. And notice how the the yarn goes in front of the hook and it's on this side of the hook and you pull up a loop. Now there are two loops on the hook. Yarn over the back. And notice how the face of the hook is going down. Remember the humble hook? And pull through. And that's a single crochet. Let's do that again. I'm going to insert it into the next chain, not to the same one, but the next chain. Notice how the strand in front of the hook, pull it up, yarn over the back, and pull through two loops. And we're going to do that all the way across. Yarn into the next chain, pull up a loop, yarn over the back of the hook, and pull through two. Let me reposition my yarn in case those of you need a little visual on that one again. Over those three three fingers, over the top of Mr. Pointer, Tall Man, and Thumpkin. Notice now I'm holding the base of where I'm crocheting. Now I'm sticking the hook in the next loop. Notice how the strand went in front of that hook. Pull up a loop, yarn over pull through two. Let's do that again. Insert into that chain in front of the hook, pull up a loop, yarn over the back, pull through two. Notice that I'm not letting go of the yarn with my left hand. Watch what I do with my left hand or with my non-dominant hand for those of you watching the left-handed version. Pull up a loop. Notice that I don't drop the yarn but I, I maintain the tension. I just You can even just use the hook to reach up and grab it and pull through two. Okay, for those of you who have never done this before and you think, oh my gosh, this is hard, I will say right up front that the hardest part of learning to crochet is the first two to three hours. Just getting that memory, the muscle memory developed in your hands. It does take time, but just like learning to walk for a baby, once they get it, they've got it for good. And, um, it's well worth the time and effort. But so if your brain feels like it's getting a little bit fried right now doing all these things, it's because you're, you're making um, fresh tunnels, as it were, in your brain. And your, your brain is working hard and your hands might actually be kind of tense right now. If that's the case, take a break. Give your hands a rest. Okay, because there is a, t a ch tendency to be real tense when you start. But don't give up just because it seems a little bit hard for the first five minutes, okay? Um, hang with it and and give it, give it a good go for a good few hours. Okay, now we've come to the last chain. Hook in, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two. And that is our first row of single crochets. Now what in the world do you do after you finish a row? Well, let me show you. We are going to turn our work. Okay, this is the front side. We're going to turn our work like this. And this is what the back side looks like. Let me show you again. I know it may take a while to understand front and back, but this is the front side of single crochets. And there goes the hook. This is the back side. Okay, so after you've turned, we're going to chain one. Remember, yarn over the back of the hook, and we work a chain. Now let's look, perspective-wise, look at the top of these stitches. Do you see how you can see the row of the Vs and how it looks like the chain that we just did? Well, that's where we're going to work. That's what we're going to work in, and it's going to look a little different. Instead of going in one loop, 
I'm going to look at the top. You're going to go through or go under the, the whole V, both sides of that V. After you put that hook in, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through too. Notice what my hand here is doing. I am actually little holding on to the fabric and the fabric is much easier to hold on to than that initial chain. So once you survive the chain and working in that, it does get easier as we go. And we're just going to repeat the same stitch again. Stick the hook in, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Stick it under those two strands there on the top, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And one other advantage of using this yarn hold like this is that you're going to minimize the motion in your hand. By doing this, you're going to save the, the ligaments and muscles and everything in your hands. So trying to do as little motion as possible, because when you make crochet projects, you do the same repetitive motions thousands and thousands of times. I'm not joking. Um, a given project can have minimum um, hundreds of stitches. So you're going to want to minimize the motion as much as possible. Okay, so go back to that single crochet. Stick the hook in. Notice where it comes in front of that hook. And it should just, see how it just pulls up? Let me do that again. See how the hook, just how how even that motion can be? Yarn over the back and slightly tilt that nose down and just pull it on through. If you're having trouble getting the yarn through, it could be because you're trying to do this. That's not going to work. But by twisting a little bit, notice how the hook shape carries it on through those loops just about effortlessly. Okay. Now it's, it's going to take time for the non-dominant hand to know how hard and how hard not to hold this yarn. If you're holding the yarn too tight and the yarn doesn't flow through, then it, it just, again, it just takes time and takes practice just like anything else. I've had 50 years to practice, so if I'm making it look too easy, I'm sorry, but this has become like breathing to me. Um, and I promise you it won't take you 50 years even just a few hours of doing this can can be, you know, life changing. Can be um, very. You can really grow a lot in a short period of time. Is what I'm trying to say. So I've come to the end of the row, and you can see the last stitch here, and you have two stitches here. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Now we have two rows of single crochet completed. If you would like, you can just work on this one stitch again and again um, and till you, till you get it down and understand it. But I'm going to go ahead and show you one more stitch. And this is more the bread and butter of crocheting. Um, and this is a stitch you're going to like because it gets quicker. I mean, it gets larger much more quickly. Okay, and for this stitch, I'm going to chain two. One, two. And this is what we call a double crochet. Now, just for clarity, some people in the industry chain three for this stitch and then skip the first stitch um, without getting overly complicated. I just have my way of doing things. Um, it's a little bit different, but I like to do a chain two and I don't count this as a stitch. Okay, now for a double crochet, this is what we're going to do. We're going to wrap the hook and I can work these double crochets right into the top loops of the single crochets, um, the tops of these, all of these stitches will look the same. You can work them one into the other, doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm going to wrap the hook before I stick the hook into the stitch. Then I stick it under those two loops, pull up a loop. Now we have one, two, three loops on the hook. Yarn over the back, pull through two loops. Yarn over the back again and pull through two more loops. See how tall that stitch is? That's twice as tall as the single crochet. Let's do that across. Yarn over the back, that's the first difference. You put the yarn over the back before you stick the hook in. 
hook in under those two loops, pull up a loop. Now you have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Let's do that again. Yarn over the back, stick the hook in, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Do that again. Yarn over the back of the hook. Stick the hook in. Pull up a loop. Yarn over. Pull through two. Yarn over. Pull through two. Let's do that again. And I will say that as a teacher, um, looking at this over and over again is probably more helpful than if you just pick up a yarn, um, the yarn and the hook and try to do it as, as if watching it for the first time. Watch this video a couple times before you actually try it, just so that you get an idea. It's kind of like looking at, in the old days, looking at a map before you jump in the car and start the engine and head down the road. Know where you're going before you do all that. So before I actually picked up my first yarn and hook, I remember watching my neighbor next door do this for hours. I, I would go over to my friend's house and I would be more interested in what her mom was doing with her crochet hook than I was in playing with my friend. So watching this, I know it may be a little boring for some of you, but watching this again and again will help in the learning process. Okay, yarn over the back, insert the hook in, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Again, give your brain time to pick up on this. This is not going to happen in the first try. And expect mistakes. That's normal. Okay, don't get frustrated and throw it down because you made a mistake or you can't get it the first two or three times. That's so normal. Um, just expect mistakes, but expect that the, as the time goes by that you will eventually get it. Yarn over under the two loops. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over the back, insert into the loops there, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we have two stitches to go here, one, two. Yarn over. Under the loops, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now if you've done all of this alongside with me for the first time, you're going to need to give that hand a break. Go ahead and stretch it out and maybe even, you know, put this aside for a while. Um, you might want to just put the whole thing down and do something else and then come back to it in 15-20 minutes or even in an hour or so. And then try it again and see what you remember. And if you don't remember it, go back and watch the video again. It's as simple as that. Let's go ahead and we're going to turn now. Okay, and this is what the back side of those double crochets look like. Now I'm going to do another row. I'm going to do this one a little more quickly, but just to show you where you can end up, where you can go. I'm going to chain two and I'm going to start right in this stitch. Yarn over. Now let me show you how smooth this can be. And I'm actually, I'm actually not going very fast. It's, it can be very smooth. Now let me teach you one more thing because I have many, many new videos, uh, videos for, for um, beginners on my channel. Look in the video description below and you'll see a list, a playlist of many things that you can try once you learn these three stitches, the chain, the single crochet, and the double crochet. I have a an easy beginner's dishcloth that you would use cotton yarn with, and it is made up of only the single crochets. And there's another pattern which alternates the double crochet and the single crochet. So lots of options, a lot of um, scarves, I have a lot of easy beginner baby blankets right there. Again, look in the video description and you'll see, um, you'll see that. Okay, so let's go ahead and work a little more. Now 
Notice, notice what my fingers here are doing. And I do this without even thinking about it. The way my fingers even just kind of hold the stitch a little bit to keep it from stretching. I mean, I, I don't even think about doing this. This is just muscle memory that is working it for me. My brain is actually quite relaxed and just like, like I said, with walking, it does take time. Babies fall down a lot before they eventually get it. They get bruised. <laughs> Hopefully that won't be the case with you. But um, I would go ahead and try this back and forth. Now, if you wanted to just continue this on indefinitely, you can have a nice beginner's scarf. Okay, let's turn and see what this side looks like. Okay, so this these are the beginning stitches and really all that you need to know. There's one more thing that I'm going to show you, and that is how do you end your project? Well, let me show you an easy way. Yarn over the back, pull through. That's You just made another chain, and then pull it tightly. And then I'm going to clip a thread. But notice that I'm, I'm clipping at least, leaving at least four to five inches here. And then all you do is watch this. Pull it through, give it a tug, and that's not going to go anywhere. So after cutting that thread, make sure you have a nice long thread there. We're going to thread that through the eye of our yarn needle, just like so. And the goal here is to hide this strand into our work. So I'm going to bring this down into the work, into that needle, or rather into that stitch, and then just run it under under some of the stitches just like that and having the yarn needle makes this very easy to do notice it was pulled tight a little bit so let's just pull back on it some and now we take our sharp scissors and very carefully be sure that we cut the string but not the stitches. You see how nicely that is hidden away? And I'll do this with this one, just to show you one more time. This is a lot easier than trying to hide the strings with um, crochet hooks, which is something I did for many years. So I'm just gonna run this underneath the stitches, just like this. And you can do this you know, with any of the stitches. And the goal, again, is just to hide the string so that is no longer seen. Okay, pull that through. And again, pull back on it so it's not too tight. And very carefully cut the strand without cutting your stitches. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning those three stitches with me. If you did, if you could please give me a thumbs up. And hit that notification bell and subscribe if you haven't already so that you don't miss my new videos coming your way. Now, as I said in the video before, give it some time. This is going to take a little more time than just five minutes or ten minutes. But once you invest those two to three hours at the very beginning, and yes, these are going to be the hardest hours of any of the crochet projects that you do. It's the very beginning. Once you get that muscle memory set, you're going to be good to go. And I really hope that this begins a journey that lasts a lifetime. God bless. Bye-bye.